everyone, my name is Eva Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be talking about scene names. Now I can't believe I haven't made a video about this already because it is so important, especially when you are first deciding whether or not you want to join the online community, you want to start going to menches, you're going to need to know what name you want to go by in those circles. So today we are going to be talking about everything related to scene names, what they are, why people use them. We're also going to be talking about how to pick a good scene name and how to avoid picking a bad scene name. As well throughout this video, I'm going to be sprinkling in little tips and tricks for using a scene name and how to interact with people in relation to your scene name as well as somebody else's scene name. The first thing that we need to know when we're talking about scene names is what the heck is a scene name? And the best way that I can describe this is a scene name is a false name or a pseudonym that somebody uses in the BDSM community. It can mean a lot of different things. Most commonly, this is a nickname that is not associated with either a birth name or a last name that somebody has from their vanilla life. It can also mean that somebody uses their birth name or their given name, but they change their last name. And a scene name could even refer to a name that is given to a submissive by a dominant or some other combination of power exchange relationship. The scene name that I'm going to be talking about in this video and focusing on is going to be more the type that you choose for yourself when you are entering the community. You don't have to be in a power exchange relationship and you don't have to be a submissive in order to use a scene name. Although with time, if you do enter the BDSM community, you may find yourself in a relationship where you have the dominant pick the name for you and you end up changing your scene name. But for all intents and purposes, I just want people to know that in this video, this is about advocating you being able to pick your own name for yourself, regardless of how you identify or what role you play in the BDSM community. So why do people use scene names? And I think from the description, it maybe is already a little bit obvious why somebody would use a scene name. And that is in order to separate one's kink life from one's vanilla life, most commonly because people want privacy. They don't want uh, nosy parents or neighbors or coworkers being able to find them on FetLife or have people from FetLife find you on your vanilla Facebook account or on your, you know, kinky Instagram or Twitter page or something. It's really a way of just being able to separate those two spheres. Now, the privacy reasons for it depend a lot on the individual person. A lot of people in the BDSM community are also in vanilla life, community leaders there. They may be in local government, they may be work at a school, they may run a daycare, they may otherwise be very involved with the local vanilla world and don't want it to get out that they like doing kinky stuff on the weekends. So being able to have that extra degree of privacy is really important. As well, for some people, Choosing a scene name is not so much of a privacy issue as it is having a specific name that you associate with that part of your life. It can be a way of getting in the right mindset, particularly if you use your scene name with a partner and that's what they always call you. It's a very good way of identifying this is BDSM time versus this is like vanilla at work space time. And for some people that really works out, some people though, again, they don't use scene names at all. They like having that congruency between their different parts of their identity. And some people like having that separation. Of course, there are more reasons than what I've talked about so far, but those are really the big ones out there that a lot of people identify with. And to some degree, it is also a tradition in BDSM to either choose a new name for yourself or to have a new name given to you. So there is definitely a little bit of a cultural BDSM association with it as well. So how do you know when you're supposed to use a scene name? This one is a little bit tricky, but I'll try to give you guys some examples so that way you know kind of based on your own comfort level how you might want to handle using your scene name within your local community and online. I think there's a big misconception out there that when you choose a scene name, that has to be the name that you go by everywhere in the kink world and it's the only name that people will ever know you by and for people who value high privacy levels that is definitely the case and for other people 
they think it is something you only use strictly when you are doing a BDSM scene. And that could be true as well. But neither one of these cases, and obviously they conflict with each other, are the only ways that you can use a scene name. I know many people who strictly use a scene name just on FetLife and for when people message them on FetLife. Everywhere else, including at munches and dungeons, they go by their everyday name. It's strictly a way of just separating their online persona from their real life persona. I know other people who, when they are first getting to know you, introduce themselves with a scene name. And a lot of people do it this way, where when they first met somebody but aren't really sure yet, whether that be online, at a munch, at a dungeon, whatever it is, they introduce themselves one way and then they say, hey, like we've gotten to know each other better. I would prefer it if you called me this name instead. And then they transition to using their regular everyday name rather than their scene name. And other people use their scene name with everybody else in the community and only choose to share their real name with intimate friends and with intimate partnerships. So there's tons of variation out there when it comes to choosing how and when you use your scene name. Now, I can guess that a lot of you are probably feeling nervous about how do you transition if you want to into telling somebody what your real name is or asking somebody to call you a new or specific name. And I totally get it, especially coming from the vanilla world, it can be really hard for people to take you seriously when they read your name on paper and they say that your name is say like, uh, I don't know, Jackson. And you say that you don't wanna be called Jackson, you wanna be called Lee. And people are gonna go, well, your name's Jackson. And sometimes the people don't like respect the name that you prefer because to them, the first name made more sense. And honestly, in the kink community, I've never really seen that happen. C names are very, very common. Most people have some form of it, whether that's online only or something else. And so people having C names, particularly when they're like prominent people in the community is totally, totally normal. So a lot of people just, you know, take it as it is and they don't really care what they call you, what you say your preferred name is. And they're usually not offended or shocked when it comes to you suddenly revealing that, oh, this was my real name all along because People usually expect, because of how important privacy is, that the name that you introduce yourself with has like a 50-50 chance of not actually being your birth name or not. And people don't really invest a lot of stock in that. Well, I think that just about covers using and interacting with scene names. So let's go ahead and talk about how to pick a good scene name. And this is a question I get all of the time. And I think it is something that takes a little bit of introspection. What makes a good scene name for one person will not work for everybody else. And it does depend on your intention for why you want to be able to use a scene name. So step one to picking a good scene name is just, you know, doing some introspection, thinking to yourself, you know, when am I going to be using this scene name? What is the purpose for this scene name? Who am I going to be using it with? And that'll help you kind of answer and help think about some more follow-up questions when it comes to picking out a scene name. I think the next step is just realizing that there's almost unlimited possibilities for what you can pick when it comes to a scene name. So what I like to do when it comes to helping people pick out scene names is help them find something that is connective to who they feel like when it comes to the BDSM world. Are you somebody who is really like earthy and spiritual? Are you somebody who is kind of demure and shy? Are you somebody who's really like bold and aggressive? Are you a princess warrior submissive? Kind of think of general categories or archetypes that kind of fit what you want to feel like in the BDSM community. So maybe if you're a warrior princess, you go with a name like Cassandra. Or if you are kind of shy and demure, you go with like a name like Violet. Or maybe if you are somebody who wants to feel very like powerful, like domineering, you go with a name, you know, like Victoria or something, something that feels either like regal or powerful, something along those lines. And I think having an archetype in general is a good idea. Although you certainly don't have to do it in a way that connects with any personal archetype, particularly if you don't really know what you are yet or what you enjoy yet. Has there ever been a name that you really, really felt drawn to? Even if just like an average everyday name, like do you really like the name Jane? Do you really like the name Catherine? Do you really like the name, you know, Jacobson? Something like that, something you've always felt particularly drawn to. 
why not use that? And I think in general as well, you can definitely use fantasy names. You can ma use made up names. I have met people who call themselves all sorts of words that are definitely not anything that anybody pulled out of a baby name book, like lemon or cookie or fairy or, you know, bunny or all sorts of names like that. You can pick unusual or fanciful names. Again, people are sort of in on it. People know that scene names happen. So it's not necessarily about concealing the fact that you have a scene name so much as it is picking one that really matches with you and is easy to say. And on that note, I think there are a few things to keep in mind. I think for the most part, especially if this is going to be something that you're going to be using a lot in most of your interactions and you want it to feel natural, picking something that has a similar length and or starts with the same sort of sounds as your original name or your birth name is generally speaking a good idea. So let's say your birth name's Christine. Going by Cassandra will probably provoke a lot more natural response when people say, hey, Cassandra, across the room at a munch, than say if you decide to change your name to Bunny, because Bunny has a completely different sound at the beginning, and it's way shorter. And until you kind of have practice getting used to the name Bunny, it's going to be really obvious and kind of be clunky trying to get used to respond, responding to that. Whereas if you have something that is similar to your existing name, but is clearly different, it's going to be a lot more natural, easier for you to identify with potentially, and just generally easier to keep in your head as like, yes, that's my name, my other name, but it's one that I recognize as belonging to me, if that kind of makes sense. You can also use your same name but do it in a different language. There are a bunch of names, especially English and Hebrew names, that have a million different iterations and translations between, say, Spanish and Russian and Italian and French and English. Is it something you can pronounce? Now, like I said, you can pick any name you want. It can be fantasy, it can be mythical, it can be made up, but if you can't pronounce it, nobody else is going to be able to either. So make sure it is a name that you can practice at, that you can pronounce, and hopefully it's something that you can actually remember going forward and when you continue to use it in the future. Also, another note for something you want to keep in mind when it comes to picking out a scene name. Make sure it's something that you're comfortable with other people saying. I know that sounds like kind of weird advice, but especially if you're trying to pick a scene name for online and you eventually want to translate into the real life community, having your scene name be like Miss Bunny Fluff might sound good in your head and you might sound like really fun and playful, but it might also feel really awkward when you have people actually call you that in real life because you're actually married in your 40s and have two children and being called Miss Bunny Fluff in real life just doesn't quite seem to mesh with you as well as it does with your online persona. Now let's really briefly just cover some things to avoid when you're trying to pick out a scene name. All of this has to do with when you're trying to pick out a name online because there is a lot more leeway, at least mentally, when it comes to picking out a name for an online persona as opposed to what people are gonna call you at a local munch. So the first thing to keep in mind is I would probably avoid like swear words or curses or profanity or like explicit references to genitals. Yeah, maybe it totally makes sense to make your FetLife profile name like Small Tiny Worm Dick, but do you really wanna be known as Small Tiny Worm Dick in your local community? Do you wanna really be known as his princess whore in your local community? I don't know, maybe you do. But at the same time, you also have to keep the consent of the people around you in mind. And especially if you're gonna be going to something like a munch, which is kind of like a covert BDSM event in a vanilla area, having to shout, hey, what's up, small tiny worm dick across the room is not necessarily going to be the kind of situation that you want to put your fellow munchgoers in. So just keep that in mind. As well, I would avoid scene names that automatically assume a power exchange relationship with the person you're speaking with. Depending on kind of what region you're in, having something like say miss or sir can be totally acceptable because it's a common polite courtesy. But in other places, especially names like dominatrix or mistress or master are very loaded terms and are mostly either reserved for like either public figures, especially in the other community for terms like master or people who are like pro doms as opposed to like 
everyday people that you might meet at your local lunch. And again, you know, maybe you run into somebody for whom the term master is a very sacred term and you insisting that your scene name is Master Big Dick is <laughs> maybe not going to jive so well with them. So either you need to come to a place of compromise on that or better yet, don't put yourself or anybody in that awkward position of having to say, I don't feel comfortable calling you that. And maybe just not have the master or the dominatrix or humiliatrix as part of your scene name at all. This is not to say you can't use these things as part of your screen name on FetLife. Those are two different things. Some people, their screen name is also their scene name. So that's kind of why I am getting into this. Use whatever you want on FetLife within their terms of service. It's not any of my business, but if you do want to be able to translate your scene name from your name that you have on FetLife, just keep those kind of little things in mind. Now, I have already mentioned when I was talking about how to make a good scene name that you should probably avoid things that are too long or are hard to pronounce or are hard for you to spell. And as well, don't make something that is like 13 syllables long. Keep it something that is natural. Keep it something that is easier for yourself and the people around you to pronounce. And that is really all you have to keep in mind. There are absolutely unlimited possibilities, pretty much, when it comes to picking out a scene name. They can be fantastical, they can be mythical, they can be based in legend and stories, they can be names from a baby book, they can be something of your complete and own creation. And I think that's wonderful, because how many times in this world do we really get to pick a name that resonates with us? And I think in the end, that's really my one piece of advice for giving a scene name or getting a scene name is picking something that really resonates with you, how you relate to the BDSM world, and how you just generally feel about yourself. So use that. Use your freedom to pick something that resonates with you. And now if you guys have any additional questions about scene names, please let me know down in the comment section below. I am always happy to help if there are more questions. If you guys haven't already and you like this video, please do subscribe. I make videos twice a week. And if you haven't already, please do also check out my Patreon. That is where I am able to offer exclusive perks and rewards like videos and photo shoots and one-on-one -on -one chats in case that's something you're interested in. Thank you so, so much. If you already do support, it means the absolute world to me. And until I see you guys next time, hope you have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.